Indianapolis Colts star running back Jonathan Taylor has requested a trade and the team has granted his permission. Now, if he is traded, what are their options at running back for young quarterback Anthony Richardson? We'll tell you next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. I am the host of the Locked On Clemson Football Podcast. And guys, thank you all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day, Monday through Friday. Appreciate you guys, as always, for being the family, but thank you all for being our everydayers, man. And uh, I can't talk football without my guy, Mr. LSU, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Keep talking to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network, man, and 2019 national champ with those LSU Tigers, man. But you know why we're here, right? Myself, Damian Parsons, we are here to bring you that championship-level content every single day, 24-7, 365, man. And if you've been talking to us, you've been listening to us, man, for the past couple of weeks, you know we're deep into this preseason, right? We're deep in the preseason football, and we have quite a few headlines, man. We got Jonathan Taylor, right, wanting to get traded. We're going to talk about you know, what options do we run, do the, at the running back position does Indianapolis have? Who have they drafted in the past, right? And then just the running back value conversation, right? Is it worth spending, you know, a first-round draft pick or a second-round draft pick or a couple second, couple thirds on Jonathan Taylor and how he's able to help your team? And then we're going to go into a coach up segment, right, with Iki Ekwanu, the offensive tackle for the Carolina Panthers, second-year player. We know he struggled a little bit, right? If you if you listen to the media, they say he struggled against Kayvon Thibodeau, so we're going to address that situation and we're gonna finish up with stock up stock down who we're hot on and who we're a little bit cold and we think we're all the way out on so dp man what before we kick that off why don't we jump into our title sponsor today's episode is brought to you by linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl that's linkedin.com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply Keith, the, the when I saw the, you know, we all knew that he requested the trade, but when it came out, was a like yesterday or or yeah, I believe it was yesterday, um, that um the Indianapolis Colts was going to grant him permission. Jonathan Taylor, their star running back that they drafted in the second round, that they were going to grant him permission to check out and talk to other teams, and his agent was already making calls per Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport. And the first thing that came to my mind, I'm pretty sure, is the first thing that came to your mind. What about a rich? You know what I mean? Like I was excited to see that backfield with the healthy Jonathan Taylor and, and Anthony Richardson in the zone read holding the mesh point. You know what I mean? Identifying the leverage of that backside defender and, and all that good stuff and manipulating the box count and everything. And, and it's like, you know, first things first, Keith, would you give up? You know, cause the Colts supposedly are asking for a first round pick. They want a first round pick for this man. So you don't want to pay him, but you want premium draft capital to trade for him, right? So that's just the nature of the beast with the running backs. Is is he worth trading a first-round pick for, Keith? A DP, I have to answer it this way. It depends on the team. It it, it To me, it, it, it truly depends on the team, right? And it goes both ways because if you're – Maybe the Kansas City Chiefs, right? And you say, okay, we won a Super Bowl without having that guy at running back, right? But we have to understand that they have Patrick Mahomes. And I know a lot of people, you know, they throw out the stat. And, and this is my opinion, right? And I'm, I'm about to ruffle some feathers when I talk about this. But a lot of people throw out this stat, DP, and it's like, oh, you know, every Super Bowl champion has had, you know, it, it hasn't been a highly drafted guy. It hasn't been a guy paid over 2 $3 million. Okay, well, let's break this down, DP. Tom Brady over the past 20 years, he's represented the AFC half of the time. So that's half of the time is X'd out. He's won seven of the Super Bowls, right? Patrick Mahomes is now responsible for two. Peyton Manning is responsible for another two, right? Like then you still throw in these, you know, like other people that have been multiple times, they're all taken up, right? Like, so stop acting like it's every team that has opportunity to win a Super Bowl, right? And then 
and you go in there and nobody needs a running back. I, I just don't know about that argument because, like I said, it, it depends on the team. And I, I threw this out there on Twitter yesterday, right? When you look at the Dallas Cowboys and when Dak Prescott was making that transition to becoming a starting quarterback, right? Ezekiel Elliott was carrying that offense, right? I've mentioned before, Derrick Henry with Ryan Tannehill, right? Like the Saquon Barkley's like, so running backs matter. It, I think it depends on the situation. And if you're betting on not caring about any other position, like the quarterback, then cool. Keep taking your chance on finding that quote unquote generational quarterback to represent, you know what I'm saying? To represent your team. But that's a one off, right? Like Peyton Manning comes once every 20. Tom Brady comes once every 20. Patrick Mahomes comes once every 20. So then where do you fall in that? And I think DP is going to get to the point of with this running back conversation. You can get to the point where you had the same conversation about wide receivers. Stephon Diggs, right? He, he was a, a fifth round pick. Justin Jefferson didn't go to pick 22. And then how many misses at the wide receiver position are also out there too, just via the big 12, right? Corey Coleman. Then we can go to Kevin White. Then we can, you know, so I'm, I think it's, it's it's a lot, right? And I, I could probably make a whole episode about it, but I'll, I'll say this, DP, that I think it just depends on the team. If I'm, if I'm a team that feels like it puts me over the top, or, you know, I'm not sure about my quarterback situation, then I may spend it. But I, if you're talking about second round picks, I would definitely go for it if, if I feel like the team is definitely appropriate. No, no. I mean, to your point, Keith, you, you go back to when the Buffalo Bills faced the Kansas City Chiefs. I thought it was at the AFC Championship game with Tyreek Hill with 13 seconds left. Right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Kind of put that game away. If the if the Bills, if Josh Allen had a real run game, right, they had a Jonathan Taylor. Man, you you drain the clock out. Mahomes never sees the field again with regulation on with time on the clock and regulation. So to your point, I Nobody think we wants to get talk about that. And and nope. and the truth no, is, the, the Bills had the Bills had running backs, right? Like like you said, they mm -hmm. went cost efficient. And then this is the other perspective, right? That the following year, I believe the Bills spent a second round pick on James Cook. With James Cook now, and 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 he's been let, let's be real, he he's been graciously average at best right and that's mm -hmm. that's complimentary average at best for a second round pick jonathan taylor right if you spent the first round which probably a, a, a difference of picks of maybe what 25 draft spots right in between that right. you could have got a you know like that's what you're saying the same thing with jonathan taylor okay buffalo you feel like you're going to be picking pick 31 anyway 50 percent of first round picks hit anyway you know what i'm saying so yeah. i think that like you you make a good point with that dp that like it, it's still it matters some, and I'm not saying that every situation is exactly the same, but I think for for specific situations, running backs have more value to specific teams than what they do for others. No, 100%, Keith. Now, on the flip side of that coin is the situation for the Indianapolis Colts. If you were to make that trade, and yes, more than likely you get a couple. If you don't get a first-round pick, you get you, it's that Christian McCaffrey trade, like, what, a couple twos, a three, a four, a four, five, whatever. Right you know what I'm saying? You get those picks. But then that still leaves a hole in your running back room. Now you do have one of or one of the guys that I really like coming out in this draft, Evan Hull. But Evan Hull also has to just get used to the speed mm -hmm. and physicality of the NFL. Because like I talked about in my film session on the Scouting Room YouTube channel, that interception by Anthony Rich, Evan Hull had a big part in that because he did not pick up the free running defensive end. He just ran right by him. So it's those type of things that you can't do in the NFL because that'll take you off the field. If you just come yeah, going into will. a route and not checking and, and protecting first and your first priority is make sure your quarterback is okay. Uh, but I do think that he could be a nice, like kind of complimentary back. But then you look at the free agent market, Keith, you got former what top 10 pick and Leonard Fournette, from from the Bayou, you know what I mean. From LSU, you have Kareem mm -hmm. Hunt. Those are the two of the top names out there, and, and they were they wanted to sign Kareem Hunt, but the money Kareem Hunt wants more money than I think teams are willing to pay him. But another name I wanted to throw out is a uh, six foot one, two hundred twenty six pound running back. You know, uh, from Fort Valley State. Uh, you know, he's he was a free agent signing uh, for the Green Bay Packers, Emmanuel Wilson. This is a young man in between two preseason games, Keith, for the Green Bay Packers. 21 carries, 174 rush yards, 8.3 yards per, and two touchdowns with his longest run being an 80-yard touchdown. He's a scheme versus a guy because they run zone and gap. I think that, you know, if you want to go cost efficient and get yourself somebody with some juice, but also some 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 size, some NFL NFL body type. I think Emmanuel Wilson, because I don't expect him to get much burn with AJ Dillon and um 
and, and Aaron Jones in in Green Bay. So I, you you send over a seven round pick and try and snatch him up before they cut him. I think that's a good. I think that's a good investment. Yeah, DP, and I'll, I'll add on another name to that, right? You're talking about running back depth. You know, you could potentially talk about Israel Bandicanda, right? And then also the Baltimore Ravens, they have a stable of running backs uh, uh -huh. sitting over there with, with, you know, with veteran Melvin Gordon. Then they still have J.K. Dobbins. Um, and, and what it, it's like five. They're going like five running backs deep. Gus Edwards there. and Justice yeah, Hill Gus, and all those guys. Yeah, it's, it, they, they have a lot of running backs, and I doubt they keep – five guys, you know, even with them wanting to potentially keep a uh, record, right? So they're, they're going to have to figure that thing out. So, yeah, I, I think there will be some running backs on the move to help them. I just, like you said, my initial thought was I thought him and A-Rich were going to be together, right? And, and you know, A-Rich was going to have, a you know, a dynamic running back to kind of lean on, you know, just in case those tough situations, I could hand the ball off, get some easy orders from my running back. And it's one of those where I help, you know, I appreciate right. you and help, you know, help me just kind of get adjusted to this game. But, you know, Jim Mercy, right? He had some comments a couple weeks ago, and then he followed it up with, you know what, go ahead and seek your trade. So we'll see how that thing go as the running back market continues. Just to I'll be honest, right? It, it's falling apart. Um, and, and it's and it's not looking, you know, well for the running back position into whatever it may be and whatever it may evolve into. But DP, man, I um I'm come up next, man. Those Carolina Panthers, you stay in Carolina, right? So you got you got to check out those Carolina Panthers in person, man, along with the preseason games. And one of the, the more polarizing names from that team, right, is, is Icky Aquano. He was a top, what, top six, top seven pick a couple of drafts ago. He was my offensive tackle one. I thought the guy was that talented, but there have been some struggles. So we're going to talk about him in a coach from up second, right? We've watched the film. We've, we've seen what happened. We've watched all the reps. I'm going to allow DP to jump straight into that. And we're going to talk about this Icky Aquano quote quote struggles and how do you fix them and i will coach them up segment guys trying to find pants and or shorts that fit well they're versatile comfortable and flexible is not easy i can tell you from personal experience but let me introduce you to bird dog bird dogs make me look good so they're going to make you look good as well i love the stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg giving you a truly sculpted looks their shorts do the same thing as lululemon's but they fit way better they fit better than those regular shorts as well that's in our closet but that's made of that stiff restricting cotton because they use a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki shorts but they stretch to give you that way slimmer fit without sacrificing movement and here's what you will love because i love it the anti-stink and sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool all day long especially in the hot summer days so guys you want to go ahead and go to birddogs.com slash locked on nfl or use the promo code locked on nfl for a free white tech hat with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on nfl or promo code locked on nfl for a free white tech hat with your order you will not want to take off your bird dogs we promise you frank reich you know, it's time to coach him up, baby. We got Ikea Kornu, your franchise, hopefully your franchise left tackle that, that was selected, you know, a year before you got there. Uh, like he talked about in the top seven picks of the 2022 NFL draft. And just for some context, man, looking at, you know, there was a lot, there's been a lot of talk about him, you know, just this preseason, right? And, and I, I want to go back real quick to the numbers from last season. You know, this young man that allowed six sacks, uh, 20 or 20 to 25 pressures and hurries. Only one QB hit that wasn't a sack. And for the most part, you know, three of his six sacks came in the first two games of last year. He went on the stretch of almost nine games without giving up a sack. So for those people overreacting to preseason, relax. What did Aaron Rodgers say years ago? R E L A X. Relax, baby. Breathe. But I'll tell you this. In terms of coach him up, man, Icky is exactly what we thought he was. He's a dominant run blocker, physical, strong, everything. Brian Burns at camp last year talked about it. You're not go, you're not running through Icky Aquano. It's just not going to happen. You gotta run around him. You gotta change directions on him, be able to bend and all that type of stuff and pass protection. So in the run game, he's fine. I don't see any issues there. Uh, you know, besides you know, just consistently bending at the knees and not leaning from the bending from the waist and leaning on guys, which would then open you up to that push-pull technique that defensive linemen will use to get you on the ground and clear you uh, clear the path and get you out of the way. But in terms of pass protection, Keith, the one thing that, that, that he has to fix, low-hand carriage, wide-hand carriage. 
And for those who don't know, those who are watching on, on YouTube, when I say wide, his hands, instead of being here and protecting his chest, his hands are way out here, like almost shoulder width in terms of where he has his hands. And you, I watched the tape of him versus Kay, Kayvon Thibodeau, and what did I see? Wide hands. Kayvon's the first one to make contact, and his hands are right in the chest plate of Icky. So he's got full control of the movement and core of said offensive tackle. So he's got to mm-hmm. protect his chest. He's patient. He's not, like, oversetting like he used to, uh, you know, early on last year, like trying to beat guys to the arc and stuff. He's patient in his drop now, Keith. But it's the, it's the technical aspect of it that he's still – struggling with because if he can close the gap between his hands protect his chest and make guys grab around his shoulders where he can get his hands latched on the inside because i'm telling you there's reps against against um kt and aziz where he gets his hands latched keith oh that rep's dead like that rep's over but it's the fact of the matter is he's not getting his punches off and you know what i mean he's not being the aggressor in terms of i don't want to be too aggressive but just you, you can't just allow guys get their hands where they want to get their hands on you and be able to control you because then you, your feet are all over the place. And, and that's the other part, like his footwork, you know, he's like up on his toes. He's not he's, be able to sink his heels into the ground. It, it's He's got to fix that. Yeah. And I, I think he, he needs to start dictating pace with leverage. Right. And, 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 and so, you know, to the listeners, to how every day is, man, so I had the opportunity and I talked about this a little bit, but I talked about the situation um, I talked about going to Duke Manny Weathers um, offensive line camp, right? His offensive line tree. And I told you, it's, it's Hall of Famers left and right. You could, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there's so many names you're going to forget who was there, right? And I promise you, he was a Hall of Fame or, or a Pro Bowl guy, current and past, right? And so, you know, some of those guys talked about specifically, I remember Lane Johnson, right? And he talked about, even what you talk about with cornerbacks, DP, like taking away something. You know what I'm saying? And then that way you know where they're going. I think Iquanu, he's he's trying to play things too straight up, right? Like he's trying to mirror too much. Like, look, you take away half a man and then you worry about defeating the other part of the man, right? Like, I, and so what I'm saying is, is that if he if he would slow his tempo down in his pass set, right? You don't have to mirror these guys exactly, right? Let them take the outside arc. You take you keep the inside arc. Like you said, nobody, nobody's running through you. So give them the outside arc, and then once you know they're fully committed because you took away the inside, now you could just follow them, flush them, and finish them around the edge, right? And even if it's speed to power, you're still in a good base to where they're not going to run through you. Icky is a, is a naturally strong kid. We've seen – we've talked to him in person. We've seen him in person. We've seen him at the day of the draft. We talked to him. And so we know how strong he is as a person. So, DP, I think when I watched him, that was the other part. But – though, like you said, coach them up, right? Those are things that are, that, that are coachable. Um, cause even, you know, at that old line retreat, like I said, man, there were guys like Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, right. Um, uh, Moten was there because they were still trying to soak up. Um, I guess you could call it game, right. Soaking up game and soaking up how to play the game of football from these summits, from some of these veterans. And the thing is this DP that while there, there was no blanket statement on how to pass protect, right. And I think that's what Icky has to understand, that there's no just one way how to do this. Like, you develop your craft in the very best, because I even think about a guy like Joe Thomas, right? And you watch how he went about it, and he made he forced the guys through him, but it was like he was almost bent backwards, right? Like, like even when he get those, 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 um, those speeds of powers, and he would just constantly collapse in the pocket, but he just held on, right? And his upper body was so flexible, but that's how Joe Thomas went about it, right? David Bakhtiari goes about it a totally different way. So Laramie Tunsil nice. is another guy that does it a different way. So he just kind of has to figure out his, his his craft, and I think he'll benefit from uh, working with some of these veteran guys. But I, I'm expecting a, a good year from him still. I do think some of those reps against KT was overblown. I think one of them was talking about like just a straight sack. It was a matter of him deciding, and that's the thing why we, you know, have, do I have experience coaching? Yes. Can I be extremely critical of every single thing? Yes. But the people that know, even when you listen to JT O'Sullivan, right? Sometimes he talks about, I don't know what their pass, what, what their pass protection rules are, right? And if you watch right. that play, if I'm not forgetting DP, the linebacker also blitzed too, right? He had a linebacker come in the B gap, and then he had K, KT come in with, I guess, technically be the C gap, right? And so sometimes you're told you take away the closest threat. Right. So that's why he kind of punched KT a little bit. And then he tried to go to the running back because that's the closest direct path towards the quarterback. 
No, that that's exactly what happened, man. And, and it's just, but Keith, and, and that's even just co that's communication between him and the right guard. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah him yeah. and the left guard. I'm sorry. It's just communication. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. hey, you know, he's coming inside. You know, you you know, he he's attacking the the B gap. You take him, and, and it's that's good defense too. Because if the defensive tackle slants towards the left guard, the left guard now has a threat on the inside of him and on the, his outside shoulder. So they, they got to communicate on how they're gonna handle that. But then when they, when the Giants threw twists and stunts at him, Icky picked it up. You know what I mean? They tried to run around the arc. Icky picked it up. He was able to anchor and do a good job. And 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 you know Bryce Young's got to help him out too by not sliding over towards him and, and kind of helping out leverage him at times. You know when he does protect the outside gap. You know what I mean? So it's, it was a it was a, a a variety of things that went wrong. But like I said, he started off with three sacks in the first two games last year, and then he nearly pitched a shutout for like seven to eight straight. So yep. at the end of the day, the end is the end is not near, guys. The end is not near. Let this young man get into the regular season and let's. Everything right now for your team is a work in progress. Iki Aquanu is going to be fine. There we go. Iki Aquanu is going to be fine. You heard it from DP, man. He studied him. He said Iki Aquanu is going to be fine. Just coach him up, right? That's what we're telling the coaches. Get your hands on him. Coach him up. Coach the details, and we think everything is going to be okay. Iki Aquanu, you know, I'll even say stock is still up, right? It's still all the way up there. But DP, I kind of hinted at it, right? Stock up. We're going with our stock up, stock down segment, man. We had we had some really intriguing performances from this past, you know, preseason week. And then we're heading into next week, right? We're heading into week three of this. So we're going to talk about a couple guys, man, that we kind of stock up or we kind of stock down on that we don't want any parts of anymore. So we're going to continue to talk about this conversation coming up next. Stock up, stock down. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you have to do is go and create an easy, it's easy, create a free job post on LinkedIn jobs, then add the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. You have simple tools at your disposal, like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skill set and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Guys, LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Just post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl that's linkedin.com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply the stock market is open keith and uh I i'm ready to buy well you know what i would say i already had stock in this guy because i feel like i was the only one that talked about him coming into the 2023 nfl draft that was wisconsin edge rusher nick herbig and, and i mm. remember putting out clips on twitter i was like listen man I didn't know what to do with him. He he waited at two. He was at he played like two twenty seven at Wisconsin. He was a full time edge rusher, and I was like, I don't see this happening in the NFL. But when you looked at his pass rush ability, the hand uses, the dip and rip, the double hand swipe, like he has the full bag on winning the edge, man. And and I I've seen that with him. You know, I think he he's one of the sack leaders in preseason. He has three sacks. A QB hurry. And everything, man. Forced fumble, and he did a good. He did a good bit of that in, in college as well, man. So for me, talk about stock up. Nick Herbig, now he's going to be a sub package rusher. When you have Alex Highsmith, who just got paid, T.J. Watts got his money. Those are your two mm -hmm. pr premier edge rushers. But at the same time, now it's going to be like we, you know, I always, you know, I always dip my toe in that, you know, you know, that create that defensive coordinator bag from time to time, Keith. And I, I think that you, you got to figure out which one of those guys can rush. A little bit inside, because if you can figure out which one of those guys can truly rush and, and slant into gaps on the interior from the edge spot, then you could put Nick Herbig out there with both of them and Cam Hayward. Man, you talk about getting after Lamar Jackson, getting after Joe Burrow, getting after Deshaun Watson. That's how you do it. So stock up for me with Nick Herbig, Keith. Yeah, and the Steelers, man, don't they have a weird way of just kind of finding success and then – dipping back into like that situation so tj watt was 200 and what 
you know, 35, 240 pounds. Now he, you know, he's probably somewhere around 245-ish, you know, any given day, depending on how he works out and things like that. And then you go find Nick Herbert, another, you know, flexible outside linebacker that people overlooked. And, you know, then they're going to, you know, develop him, get the most out of him. And so I I, I agree that that, I, that was a good find. That, and matter of fact, DP, I'm right with you. Stock up. That was a good call. DP, we just had a game, right? We had this, we had the Ravens and we had the, uh, the commanders and, I'm, I'm gonna go with two obvious names, but I'm like, you know, when it's a good company, you just invest more money into it, right? And I have two players, Zay Flowers, right? Mm -hmm. I had a first round grade on them. I'm all in. I'm throwing even more money at it, DP. I'm, I'm stock even more up, man, just because that guy, electricity, right? Like just the the elusive the elusiveness that he has in the open field, ability to make people miss, man. Just and I think this is what's going to happen that being in this offense and playing with Lamar Jackson, there are going to be some freestyle opportunities to where the defense is going to break down. And then Lamar is going to be able to get the ball to Zay Flowers. And then now everybody, like everybody's going to be scattered. Right. And he's going to be able to make more people miss in the open field, man, just on those untraditional plays. So I'm, I'm all the way up on him. And this is a guy that, you know, I don't want to just call him a slot, right? He was an outside wide receiver at Boston College. That's one of the reasons why we liked him. He was just smaller, right? He was just of your, your Steve Smiths and your Antonio Browns type ilk in the sense of the fact that they were those X, Y receivers or, you know, you want to call them Zs or whatever you want to call them, right? On the outside, they just can get the job done. They were just a little bit smaller than the other guy, DP. And I know I'm not big on this, but it, it was just the intensity that I seen also. Emmanuel Falls, right? Stepping up and making that tackle, man. Um, what that was, I think that was fourth down, I believe. He came up and, and, and yeah, him. So. was it fourth down? I think it was fourth down and came up. First of all, beat Daniel Falele, who probably has 200 pounds on him, literally 200 pounds bigger than him. Um, beat him across right. face real quick, beat him to the spot to be fearless to do that, and then come and make the solid tackle. That's what I say, man. Tackling, I don't like to make a huge deal out of it because most of the times, DP. It's a want to, man. You got to want to yeah. do it, right? And Emmanuel Forbes, as a young guy, 160 pounds, um, he wants to do it. And I love it. I love it for the Commanders franchise. I love it for this defense. I love it for what he could bring to just the, the, the cornerback position in the future. No, 100%, Keith. I like those. Uh, for me, I, uh, the next name I have is Austin Watkins, the wide receiver, um, you know, out of out of UAB for the for the Cleveland Browns, in, in three he, he played you know Hall of Fame game, then you know week one of preseason week two, you know two catches thirty five yards in, in a touchdown, um in the Hall of Fame game, uh it, it, you know the next week against Washington eight targets six receptions seventy one yards, then last week against the Philadelphia Eagles fourteen targets seven receptions one hundred and thirty nine yards and a touchdown. And this is a young man that, you know, in terms of size, 6'3", 210, he looks to have that good speed long down the field to average 15 to almost 20 yards per catch. And for the Cleveland Browns, you know, it's just one of those situations where you say, man, the rich gets richer in terms of what they have at receiver right now. Because if this young man makes the team, like you have yourself a wide receiver, four or five, that you can bring in and take the top off the defense that, you know, especially with, I think, I'm not sure, I can't remember, if they, I don't think they paid done the people Jones yet. But at the end of the day, like when you think about like just from a contract standpoint, if DPJ wants to price himself out of Cleveland, you got a guy that has a similar size and build, might be a little faster, might be the same type of athleticism that can win and pair well with Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper. So I wanted to give a, a, a good shout out to him, man, because he's been balling. He's, he's really been out there putting in work, man. And um, and one one other player running back, you know, Julius Chestnut for the Tennessee Titans, mm. man, he's looked good in the preseason, uh, splitting those carries with Tajay Spears and everything like that. So I think the run game, you know, whenever whenever Derrick Henry either hangs up the, the cleats or they decide to cut, you know, cut bait and trade them off somewhere, I think their running game is going to be fine for the for the near future with those two young running backs. I, I like the mention of those two guys because they they, st they stood out to me this past week too, and both of them, right? We know Tajay is electric, um, but Chestnut, he also did his thing too. So both of those guys definitely stood out. DP, I'm going to finish this thing off, man. And we talked about him last week, and I'm going back to the commanders again. Sam Howell, like he, he's looking more and more like like the, the, the bigger sample size we get, DP, the more and more he's looking like the real deal. And talking about the draft process, I had such a tough time like hating him. And, and it was confusing. And we don't know it is we could have to walk all these words back, right? But I would say early on, I'm not surprised that he's doing this 
because what I seen on film was not a bad quarterback, right? So for him falling yeah. all the way to the fifth round, I, I didn't understand it. And, and, and maybe we'll get to the regular season and figure it out. But for what it could mean for the commander's offense, right, and that team, I think the commanders, you want to take the step forward in the sense of the fact of you want a quarterback that's going to make you all a tough out every single week, right? That, like, we, you can't count a loss against us. You know you're going to have to play football. And then it appears that Sam Howell is going to give them that opportunity. No, I, th- I think he will, Keith. And, you know, just got to – I think, you know, he's very coachable. And I think that's going to work well with Eric B. Enemy, man. I-, I think that they can do – I think they can make some things happen in 2023 for sure. He has a chip on his shoulder also, DP. So I, I-, I like him. We'll-, we'll continue to see how these things unfold, man. We were- I think I just seen a tweet, DP, that said we were 16, 15 days away from NFL kickoff. So we right there. We right around the corner. It is coming, man. But we have another week of preseason football, man, where we get to watch some of these, uh, you know, some of these starters, see if they get into the game this week and then talk about it after that. So we have some reactions. But, DP, like I said, my, I think that was a pretty good show, man. We talked about Jonathan Taylor. I got a little heated at the beginning. I had to calm down, relax. <laughs> Woosa, I still got some more stuff I have to say. But, you know, we'll save it for another episode, DP. Then we did our coach him up. It get Kwanu and stock up, stock down. So that wraps up today's show, man. Like always, shout out to our everyday is for tapping in with us. Your boys over here at the Lock on NFL Draft Podcast, Keith Sanchez, Damian Parsons. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available on YouTube. After you subscribe, like the like our video when they come out, but hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever we drop content on the channel. For tomorrow, we have a preview for Thursday Night Football. We have two games on tap, and we're going to talk about the prospects and players that you need to keep an eye on and that you need to watch in those games. In terms of Twitter, uh, you can find the follow Keith Sanchez at the Talent Code. Me, Damian Parson, DP underscore NFL. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.